Another very common presentation I see in my office and with my patients is excessive belching. When we're belching and gas is kind of coming up this way, we think like what's going on in, like in the stomach and upper GI tract and what's contributing to those symptoms. Now, the most common presentation is you know, belching or burping during and after meals. And when we see that associated with food, some of the questions that I ask is, does it matter what we're eating? Like if we have a salad, if we have a steak, if we have you know, avocado or guacamole. And these are questions that are targeted towards different macronutrients, right? Is it more carbohydrate driven? Is it more protein or fat? Now, protein, remember the biggest role of stomach acid is to help us digest protein specifically. And if we're eating something like a steak and we're starting to belch a lot, and then we get suspicious of, do we have low stomach acid? Now, I don't just you know, go ahead and just recommend that right off the bat, but I want to do further testing and look at things like a stool test to understand like, what is the digestive enzyme output? Because one of the biggest things that impacts digestive enzyme output is low stomach acid. So I can see that on a stool test. And then I also look for H. pylori. H. pylori is something that can burrow into the stomach lining right into those parietal cells. And the parietal cells, remember, are the ones that make stomach acid. So over time, H. pylori can downregulate stomach acid and not allow our stomach to make as much. And now we can't digest our food as well. And when, when that happens, a lot of times we get these air pockets and we start to belch more, especially during and after meals. So that's one of the biggest things that I look for, but I always test and don't guess. I always want to test first before making any recommendations. If it's happening in between meals or even with things like water, right? And things like that, we look at different mechanisms. We want to look at the whole microbiome. We want to understand the physiology. We still want to know stomach acid, digestive enzyme output. How's the gallbladder look? And how about motility? You know, how much stress is involved? Does it get worse under stress? We want to look at a lot of different areas with testing and also with history there to get a better grasp of what's going on. So everybody burps once in a while and belches and define for us, like, how does it go from a normal bodily function to something of a concern? I have patients rate their symptoms and a lot of times I'll see people, you know, rate belching when it's bad at like, you know, eight, nine, 10, like it's just out of control. Like no one else belches like they do, or someone's commented on it. Like, man, you belch a lot around your meals or why do you burp all the time? So while well, we want to try to figure out like, you know, why, what is the mechanism? We don't just burp for no reason. And so we want to make sure that we understand the mechanism and we address it and then make sure that we can sustain those results over time if we can figure it out. When we look at excessive belching, is that a risky thing? Well, I mean, the biggest thing that we want to look at is what is the cause? And sometimes the cause can be things like H. pylori. One of the biggest reasons we want to clear out H. pylori is H. pylori can predispose us to things like low stomach acid and ulcers. So we want to make sure that if it is coming from H. pylori, that we eradicate it, we get rid of it, and then we get that out of the system.